to witness the first Sunday even in the month of April, the fourth month. We thank you for keeping us thus far since the beginning of this year. We thank you for the grace and the opportunity to live by faith. And Lord, you have never failed us. None of your wonderful promises, Lord, have failed. Father, we are here to say we thank you. We say, Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, receive all our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we are here again and it's time for your word. I pray God Almighty, you open our hearts. Precious Holy Spirit, teach us yourself. That our coming Lord, you are God, we might, shall be ble- we might be blessed indeed. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A louder amen. Let's have a seat. I want to read from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 47. John 1, 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and seeth of him, Behold, an Israelite <clears throat> indeed in whom is no guile behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile Acts chapter 11 verse 22 to 26 then tidings that is of the converts came to the disciples in Jerusalem came unto the hearers of the church which is at in Jerusalem and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came and he had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them that with purpose of art they will cleave unto the Lord talking about Barnabas now he said for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch say amen, amen. this morning I will be speaking on the topic a Christian indeed a Christian indeed the first scripture we read Nathaniel was invited to come and see Jesus it was Philip that invited Nathaniel so we have found the savior we have found the Messiah 
the one that the prophets have spoken about Jesus of Nazareth and of course Nathanael was asking and said wait a minute can any good thing come out of Nazareth and Philip said whether good thing can come out of Nazareth or not you just come and see but one thing that we are making reference this morning when Jesus saw Nathanael coming and Jesus looked at Nathanael and Jesus said when Jesus saw Nathanael coming unto him he said of him behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no God Jesus saw a man who happened to be meeting him for the first time. But the searchlight of Jesus was penetrated into his heart. And Jesus looked at him when he was coming and said, this guy is an Israelite indeed. Is an Israelite indeed. What did Jesus mean by calling somebody an Israelite indeed? Why didn't he call the Pharisees who are also Jews Israelite indeed? But there was something that made, you know, uh, Nathaniel to stand out. He was a person who understand, you know, the faith of Abraham. Somebody whose faith could be traced to Father Abraham. Somebody whose service to Yahweh was without deception. You know, Jesus Christ rebuked the Pharisees that they love to pray in the marketplaces. They love to wear gowns. They love the appellations from man. They love people to, you know, to recognize them. They were not Israelite indeed. Because the word Israelite or Israel came from the name change of Jacob. There was a change that brought the word Israel. When Jacob was Jacob, he could not be called an Israelite indeed. Jacob was a deceiver. Jacob was a cheat. Jacob was a corrupted individual. Despite the fact that he was from the lineage of Father Abraham. Despite he was supposed to be the carrier of the covenant. But yet, all those covenants could not materialize in his life. Until there was a change in his life. When he encountered God or in Bethel, it was the encounter of God with the angel at Bethel that made his name to change to Israel. Because the angel asked him, what is your name? When he kept on saying, I will not let you go except you bless me. And the angel said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And the, and the angel said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. Your name shall be called Israel. So when somebody is called an Israel, he's supposed to be a changed person. Supposed to be a transformed person. Must be somebody who is traceable to father of faith, Abraham. So many people were in the land of Israel. They were Jews. But they could not be called Israelite indeed. But when it comes to Nathaniel, he was not like the Sadducees. Despite the fact that he was not a Pharisee, but there was something that connected him to the faith of Abraham. And so when Jesus saw him, Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite indeed. And what, if, what made him to be an Israelite indeed? He said, There was no guy. <coughs> there was what? No guy. Just like the former Jacob. There was guile in Jacob. 
there was deception in Jacob until he became an Israelite and his name was changed to Israel and Jesus looked the searchlight of Jesus looked at Nathanael and said behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guy now you see I'm using that now to ask to talk about a Christian indeed now everybody answer Christian I am a Christian I am a Christian I am a Christian but Jesus said, I know those who are mine. Say, God knows those who are his. He knows those who are Christian indeed. So the question is, are you a Christian indeed? And if you are a Christian indeed, then there must be characters that show you as a, as, as a true Christian. Now, you see, when we're looking at the Christians, where the word Christian came from? The Bible tells us about the story of how people in Antioch had the gospel. The, the disciples, the preachers, they spread preaching the gospel to the Antiochians. And when they heard, the believers in Jerusalem, the apostles, when they heard that the people of Antioch have received the gospel, for them to be deepened in their faith, for them to be well established, they sent one of the apostles. What is to understand that in the New Testament is not only 12 apostles we had. Now, Barnabas was qualified to be called an apostle. He was not counted among the 12, but he was a man who distinguished himself as a follower of Jesus to the extent that the the, 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 the church, the early church, they gave him an appellation. They call him the son of consolation. A son of encouragement. Hallelujah. They said that, I said, who when he came and he has seen the grace of God in the lives of those who received Jesus, he was glad and he exhorted them all. Why was he the one that was sent to go and do that. All the apostles were there, they were not sent. It was Barnabas that was sent. Because there's something that was unique in Barnabas. He was a Christian indeed. <laughs> he was a man who was transparent. He was a man who is not a deceiver. He wasn't a cheat. A transparent Christian. If he says he's giving to the church, is giving right from his heart. You remember it was one of the people that sold their lands and they brought the money to the feet of the apostles to take care of the work of the church and people in the church. That was a man Barnabas. Barnabas was a soul winner. Barnabas was called the son of encouragement. A son of consolation. When somebody is not feeling good send Barnabas there when somebody is not happy Barnabas will make that person happy when somebody is sorrowful Barnabas will bring joy to that heart he was a man with good character he was a man that you would like to be with he was a man that was ready to sacrifice you know when he gets to a place there is going to be a change there is going to be a transformation even when Saul who encountered Jesus he came to the church in Jerusalem they could not trust Saul who later became Paul. The Bible says that he went into oblivion nobody could hear about Saul of Tarsus but when this man got to the Antioch after he has ministered he has preached to them to establish them he encouraged them that they should cleave unto the Lord. He said he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. He had good characters. He had the grace of God upon his life. And much people was added unto the Lord. Even through his ministry, many people were added unto the Lord. But the Bible said then he departed. <coughs> Barnabas then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to look out for Saul. He was not yet Paul then. Praise God. He became to look for Saul. 
Where is this young guy? Where is this man who gave his life to Christ? <clears throat> he gave his testimony. But the church were too afraid to accept his testimony. That he saw the Lord. That he has, is now a changed person. <clears throat> a former killer. A former persecutor of the church. Church in Jerusalem could not, they could not understand. That this one, they could not trust him. It's just like if a Boko Haram said he's converted today. And he comes to your church. Hello? I say ah, he's a Boko Haram. He just came from uh, Kaduna or from, and, uh, from Bauchi. As he was coming, Jesus met him. He wanted to come and kill in Ibadan. To come and throw uh, what do you call it? Bomb to churches in Ibadan. But when he was just coming, when he got to a job, Jesus met him. And he now came straight here. And said he will have testimony. He said, now I am born again. How many of you will, be, will believe that kind of person? May God help you. I'm sure you will, you will change the location of your seats. Hallelujah. I know many of you will be looking for window side or door side so that uh, uh, this one to add uh, say salt to injury if he carries a bag. You don't know what is inside that bag. And say, I am born again. I'm born again. You know, our ushers will begin to watch him. I don't need to tell them. They will begin to watch him. They will begin to watch him. Anytime you want to put hands into that bag, they will tell Oga, okay, leave that bag, you know, concentrate. <laughs> Praise God. Now they will monitor him till the end of the service. And that is why you see, if he says he's born again, say, you are born again, God help you. Continue to be born again. That was what happened to, to Saul. Who later became Paul. He went back to Tarsus. Discouraged. He didn't know what to do next. But thank God for Barnabas. Barnabas went. He believed. When the church in Jerusalem were doubting this man. Barnabas believed in him. He believed in testimony. And he traveled to Tarsus. To look for him. And to encourage him. The Bible says that. You know. And when he had found him. He brought him unto Antioch where revival was going on. And it came to pass that for a whole year Paul was under discipleship. He was not preaching in that one year. He was sitting under the tutelage of Barnabas. He was there teaching and imparting the life of the young convert Paul. For a whole year it was after that if you look at Bible history he took Saul back to Jerusalem to go and introduce him again to the church you know when somebody says I am a believer I am a Christian and this and that we want to hear who is the person that can testify about your Christian life a Christian indeed a Christian indeed you can't say you are a Christian without root, without a foundation. How was your conversion? Who discipled you? Who raised you up? Don't blame the church if some people are not accepted because we have had so many cases. We have people that were received in the church and they became, you know, people who stole, you know, the, 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 the church keyboards and organs. Praise God. But what am I saying this morning was that this man somebody reintroduced him to church in Jerusalem and I want to tell you when you look at Barnabas whatever Barnabas says he has seen everybody will agree with him if Barnabas gives testimony about a life everybody will say for what Barnabas has said let us agree because he was a respected believer a respected Christian he was not among the 12 apostles but he stood he was firm in the Lord he was a person that can be called what? a Christian indeed and if you look at that uh, way we are reading the Bible says that and uh, you see and uh, it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church that is church in Antioch and taught much people and the disciple were first were called Christians first in Antioch. 
before this place there was nowhere you hear the word Christian you are just disciples of Jesus disciples of Jesus but when the grace in the life of Paul imparted the people in Antioch then the Antiochians who were not even part of the church they were the people that began to say these are Christians indeed hello so these are what? these are Christians they were first also Christians Christ like Christian like Jesus Christian followers of Christ Christian people who are transformed like Christ Christians indeed just like Jesus said somebody was an Israelite indeed now you are supposed to be a Christian indeed hallelujah not what you say with your mouth but what people could see in your life this Barnabas we are talking about if you look at the story of Barnabas it was an interesting story he was the one that did follow up of Saul Paul he was the one that groomed Paul in the word of God alright for one year he was under the uh, Paul was under the tutelage of a uh, discipleship class of uh, Barnabas but by the time the church in Jerusalem accepted Paul the Bible said and Paul was also in church in Jerusalem for another three years hello I say hello you know people don't understand that church has process somebody is born again because he used to be an Afa or used an Ab to be an Abalist within three months he said he's starting ministry that he want to begin to preach to, 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 to win other Muslims he will now start his ministry because you know even preachers who are ignorant they are the one that will push him out if you have been in the church in the 80s you have been born again in the 80s and 70s all those are large all those are kill this are kill that that they say we are born again then where are they today hello some of those people say that they were into occult and they are into occult they are this they are coconut they are whatever where are they today you cannot many of them who say they are born again they say now that they will now go and begin to use the dressing of Oboni you know the shaki Oboni they will see bring it to the altar to demonstrate they bring the instrument of darkness they bring it to church to begin to say this is how we used to use this one when we're in this what do we need that for and the example you see in the, in the bible the bible says those who are born again who are using curious hearts shams what did they do they brought them and they were burnt but the so called christian converted today the shams what they are using in the kingdom of darkness they can still keep them they said they want to use it for testimony there is no testimony outside Jesus there is no testimony more than being a Christian indeed and so because of that they will not begin to use all those things you cannot use the instrument of the enemy to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ what is expected to be seen in you it's not physical things but your character your lifestyle your changed life is enough a testimony by their fruits ye shall know them not by their charms not by their emblems not by what they have used before some of those people we are talking about they are back in the world many of them call themselves prophets they are into occult many are still using magical hearts because by the time they now see that there is no backup of the power of the Holy Spirit they begin to look for alternative and that's why we don't hear them any longer they are no longer relevant the ministry that they said they started we just close up, we close down they will become an abalist in Christian clouds, I mean, you understand what I'm saying now that is a problem because anybody who says is born again you want to go into the ministry without proper discipleship being granted in the church then you are fake you can't last Paul 
with his knowledge of Judaism with what he understood in, in Judaism religion as a Pharisee he was talking somewhere he said I am Pharisee of the Pharisees in, in other words I am Pharisee indeed but Pharisee indeed is not equal to Christian indeed do you understand he was Pharisee indeed but he was not a Christian indeed he said but all that was gained for me I counted them as lost and so he was under the discipleship of Barnabas for one year in Antioch later Barnabas brought him to Jerusalem to introduce him to the church in Jerusalem and when they accepted him he was with them for three years it was after that three years he began to give the testimony of his conversion it was after he was groomed then what God told him is somebody listening to me this morning there are a lot of mess up going on in the body of Christ because people don't know the scriptures they don't understand church organization structure of church he said God called me God called me even going to Bible school is not an approval that God called you there must be a church you belong to where you are groomed praise God that you can call this is my root it was there it was after that don't forget when he met with Christ on the Damascus road the Lord told him he's going to send him to the Gentiles is that also is somebody listening to me say he will be sent to the Gentiles to be a preacher to the Gentiles to be bring light to those who are in darkness but with all those things he did not start the second day he attempted to start it became a problem then he went to Antioch then the church showed him the proper way to start you have to be groomed you have to be trained you have to understand the ethics of the church ethics of ministry ethics of Christian life it was after four years if not plus he started the first missionary journey shout hallelujah some people they think that God is in hurry ah, I said God ah, you see God appeared to me hey, God is in hurry so let me go and start they can bolt out of the church without being groomed, without being sent forth and they tell you I can go and do something and the church and the pastor is trying to cover my glory cover my glory, cover my ministry <laughs> praise God there may be some pastors that are doing that but the point there is that he that believe in the Lord shall not make haste hallelujah you follow the procedure it's for your own because ministry is save your soul first before you save the soul of others preach yourself first before you preach you know to, to others somebody hearing me that is ministry you don't need you see if you if you if you uh, hallelujah i used to say it uh, let me go a little bit to the world of politics if you remember the story of politics in nigeria there was a time this man was senate president Paul Aim, Abi? Pius Aim, yes, Pius Aim. When he became the Senate president, Amen, was a young man, a young politician. He became the Senate president. I knew that is the end of his political career. Hello? Because when you become Senate president, you are number three in the country. Are you coming back to become minister? When they say you should come and become, you know, secretary to do something, you are coming down. You understand? But when you climb the ladder of life, a step after the other, amen. It is then you get to that place you'll be able to stay. Who hears of power pious? I am again. In the political co political calculation of Nigeria. Are you following Sina? Who is hearing about him? The same thing. I said 
said the proverb I said when a young boy three years four years five years or six years when he begins to cast a long shadow casting a long shadow I said ah come and see me I am tall come and see how tall I am a wise man an elderly person knows that okay the reason why your shadow is tall is because you are in the evening time it is the evening time your shadow is longer than you three of us talk to me now if you have not go and do all those practical praise God but in the morning in the afternoon your shadow you are in fact your shadow is shorter than you so when you begin to cast long shadow when it is near the time you are already in the evening of your life many people enter into the evening of their lives because of pride because of arrogance they become irrelevant because they are calling themselves what they are not supposed to call themselves when an undergraduate in university is calling himself an apostle some of you pass through a high institution you know when some of them say I am a prophet they cannot last in the things of God because you know pride goes before the fall and the reason is that when you give yourself an appellation <laughs> devil is not taking it as a joke if you are a brother if you are a sister if it is one demon devil is looking forward you know to make sure that you fall the day you become an apostle he will send 10 or 20 to you and because you do not have the spiritual capacity to sustain to ward them off that person will fall and fail and that's what happened to people in the ministry also because they fail to understand that life is stages life is in stages everything lies a process so Paul before he become Paul the apostles before the church begin to recognize him as an apostle that's why the encounter that he had he had to be a disciple they could they were able to say that the Bible said they prayed for him and he was sent forth is that not in the Bible and when they were sending him forth Barnabas his disciple was there to go with him he was a good man a man you can cause a Christian indeed. Barnabas did not say, hey, my convert. And I begin to follow him. Hmm, that's not the problem of Barnabas. He understood his ministry and to encourage. Whatever you are doing, let me be there to encourage you. So the first missionary journey was there. He followed him. So they begin to talk about Paul. At a time, they don't talk about Barnabas again. And Barnabas was not annoyed he kept on going the first missionary journey they went and when they were going you know it was when I was looking at the Bible I discovered that Barnabas that John Mark happened to be the son of sister to Barnabas so John Mark was taken along in the journey but when the second missionary journey because at a point John Mark went back you know he went back home said maybe he was homesick as a young boy I said I want to go back home he has to leave them and he left them and went back to uh, to Jerusalem so when they were preparing for the second missionary journey and John Mark said yes I want to go again Paul said like that you are not going ah. the other time you left us you went home you want to follow us now no you are not going to follow us ah. and Barnabas said let's let him follow us let us encourage him you know he was a son of encouragement if he was weak then if he say he's strong now let us what let us allow him Paul said no even Paul did strong head and said no he won't follow us and the Bible says there was a sharp disagreement they did not fight though. that was a sharp disagreement because Paul Barnabas was operating on principle of what Paul did not understand yet hallelujah and so when they say okay now all right Barnabas had to said okay John Mark let's go he has to went to other route preaching the gospel amen and it was now Silas Abby. it was Silas that follow Paul go and read the account of Paul's second missionary journey 
you will look at so many things and suffer. Maybe if there is a Barnabas to cancel him, you will not fall into some traps. Maybe we wouldn't have made some mistakes. All right? Where to see? That one also follow the pattern of life. I'm talking this morning about a Christian indeed. Can you be called a Christian indeed? Hallelujah. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Before you say somebody is a Christian indeed, what do we expect from such life? Look at Ephesians chapter 5 verses 9 to 12. Let's read from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5. He said, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are you what? Light in the Lord. Walk as what? Children of light. Talk to me. Walk as what? Now, if somebody is a Christian indeed, you will want darkness. The dark things, the devilish things, the light things, the, 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 the secret things, polluting things, sinful things, that is when you are in darkness. Now that you are in the light, he said you must walk as children of light. A man that you are going to call a Christian indeed. We must see that person walk as children of light. Somebody follow me? Now, verse 2, verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. You know what? Goodness. A Christian indeed. How good are you? In all goodness. How good are you to people? How good are you in your community? Because that is when your light can be seen. How good are you to others? When you have to feed and there are people around you that are hungry, how good are you to them? It is good for your children to go to school. There are other children in the church or in your community that you can stretch a hand of love to, of care to. Do you, do you bother to do that? How shine is your light in your environment? The Bible says that when you say you are in light, there must be spirit, there must be fruit of the spirit of goodness and what? Righteousness. There must be a right choice at all times. Everything you are doing, there must be a right choice. You are making a right choice. That is righteousness. When thing you know that will not glorify God, you're not going to do it. That is what people will see and say, this one is different. Everybody is stealing money in the department, it's not going to steal the money. Everybody, you know, is doing, using this and that, it's not going to do that. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. You do everything. You do everything. As somebody who is in the light. There are some things at times you are not meant you think that people think that it's not necessary but that is your character we buried my brother on Friday and uh, yesterday was well, Saturday is that also okay yesterday then I sat down then I began to put all the donations my brothers made the British everybody made even somebody who is outside you know I mean that seems a part of the donation made even to the 20,000 everybody made, I made the account. So, so and so gave this. This one gave this. The one they did not know. This one gave this. This one gave this. The one I gave. You understand something now? All right, the expenses. I did the expenses. The vault. How much we pay for the vault. How much we do for the entertainment. How much we do, you know, for the mortuary. How much. You get my point now? He could lend. Even the one that is the decoration, the chairs, and the. And what do you call it now? The uh, what do you do outside there? Line states and things like that. I put it that that one was given decorate. I mean, was done free. Amen. I give. I do everything. I send it to every one of them. They don't expect it from me. Hallelujah. But for them to know that their money is spent and it is well spent. Are you getting my point now? 
the burning for casket, every, everything near. So that it won't be that oh, our brother is the. So it won't be that our brother spend the money. We don't know how he spent the money. Even the ones after I've done that, I now remember that I still did something that I did not. I've got my wife. I said, okay, look, remind me. All the expenses. Praise God. Even the one you don't remind. And at the end of the day, what we spend is more than what everybody donated. And that is on me. But why do I do that? You must be righteous. That is how to be a light. And I send account, even the person who gave, one of our son who gave 20,000, got the same report. To say that, look, every donation is acknowledged. Shout hallelujah. It's not how big everything that everybody did. Now, hey, God sees my heart. Let people also see your heart. God knows I am a Christian. It doesn't matter when anybody says, let us see the light in you. Let us see that you are a Christian. Is somebody following me? A Christian indeed, in whom there is no guile. Let it be said about you, a Christian indeed that is righteous. A Christian indeed that is good. Now he's talking about, he said, in goodness and righteousness and a Christian that is in truth. When he say good money, don't go outside to see whether it is money. Because there are Christians that when they say good money, you must go out to go and check whether it is money. No. When they say good night, their good night is good money. Their good money is good afternoon. Their words never tally. A Christian indeed. Is that, can you be called a Christian indeed? Who is truthful? A Christian indeed who is righteous, a Christian indeed, you know, who is what again? Who is what? Who is good, who is righteous, who is in the truth? Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You, a Christian indeed, is a person, what is acceptable to God? You want to look out for it. It's not that uh, I didn't know. Find out before you do it. Be sure of what you are doing. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I say, eh, because I didn't know. That's why I didn't know. Find out before you do it. Anything you want to do, find out. Is these things right? Amen. If I'm engaged to a person to go and pass the night in the house of my boyfriend because we are going to marry, is it right? I don't know whether it is wrong. Whether it's right. Why don't you ask? Hallelujah. And say, nothing happened between us. So you are the one telling us another story. Praise God. The people saw you in that house entering and you came back the second day. You tied to where to go to the bathroom. Abby? Hallelujah. And say, nothing. We are angels. Nothing happened throughout the night. You are telling a story. People have their own story already. Is that also? And tomorrow when you say, Jesus is saved. Jesus, accept Jesus. They say, sister, sister. <laughs> Wonderful sister. Amen. Amen, sister. They begin to make jest of you because your lifestyle, your character does not show that you are a Christian indeed. You are not a light to behold. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. Are you a Christian indeed? Somebody follow me? Proving what is acceptable unto the law. Look at the next verse. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Don't have relationship with anything that is called darkness. Reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which were done of them in the secret. For all things that are reproved are made mani manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Shout hallelujah. A Christian indeed. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 26. Galatians 5 22 to 26 tells us the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit 
Say they are love. They are what? Joy. Peace. A Christian is loving. A Christian is joyous. When I hear that, you know, as a counselor, counseling psychology, and I hear that some people leave, you have not had people who left the church to go and commit suicide. Amen. Christian, who is a worshiper? She be an canny story in the paper. A worshiper in the church who went to go and commit suicide. He did worship. He played keyboard. He was a choir leader. And yet he went out after that service to go and commit himself. Where is the joy of the Holy Spirit? Hi, Christian. He's facing depression. Why will you be depressed? The Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. All right? That in everything, you should count it joy. If you have the comfort of the Holy Spirit, you are not going to kill yourself. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord church. Let me tell you, in this life, not everything you dream will come to pass before you go. You will pray. But God shows the prayer to answer. Hello? Praise God. The Bible says, some people they became eunuch for the sake of the kingdom that is what you see in reverend fathers Abi? they choose the power they want to become a eunuch i'm not going to marry Abi? that is a choice but don't think it is the only reverend father there are pentecostal preachers who say they are not going to marry and they decided that look i want to join you alone okay the bible says that you see an example is uh, mama sarah elton the man who brought pentecostal revival to nigeria in the days of uh, joseph Ayodele babalola all right Pahes G. elton he's the father of the pentecostalism in nigeria he was one of all these adeboyes all these they were people that will sit under his teaching imparting them all right some of the christians of those days we are privileged also to hear him preach in his lifetime. That is Pa Elton, S.J. Elton. When he got, I mean, when he came to Nigeria in 1930, 1930 he came with, with the wife, he came with a four or five year old girl, their daughter. The daughter came in, groom train, all right, in Nigeria, in Elisha there. And eventually, Mama Sarah, that's Mama Sarah Elton, she decided not to marry and continue as a missionary in Kogi, in Kaduna, all those areas before he came back to his base, his father's base, because his father has become an Elisha person. All right? Mama Elton is in Elisha now. She has celebrated her 80 years' birthday sometimes. That is somebody who decided because of the kingdom. I don't need marriage. That is people that who choose to be eunuch. But the Bible says there are people that the world made eunuch. Praise God. Those are the people that castrated. You remember our kings. You know, when you want to walk in the palace, the palace guard they will castrate them. So that they will not sleep with a queen, you know, you know, you know, the Dolores. They were made eunuch. And the Bible says some people they were born eunuch. They were you born you know because they you know to be able what the genital uh, whatever that can make them to say I want to have a wife, I want to have a husband did not even come with them. So they were born eunuch. So you can see that in this world, we keep on praying, but not everything you desire that you will get. To. I hope you, are, you, are, you, you agree with me. It's not everything. But whatever he does, he has done the best for you. Somebody hear me? And that's why nothing should take you from the love of Christ. If you're a Christian indeed, now, give me that scripture again. You know, fruit of the spirit, joy. 
You are not going to be say, ah, this and everyone say, oh, sorry, brother. Oh, sister, sorry. The Lord is your strength. God will remember you one day. Yeah. In fact, if you see what that brother is passing through, uh, you will pity him. Oh, I yell. I yell. I a camera. <laughs> and you too, I said, I said, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You that's supposed to be celebrated. You have become somebody to be consoled. And you have forgotten that thing God has done for you. You are married. But your husband divorced you or your husband walk away. Is that why you want to kill yourself? You pray. You keep on praying. What God wants to do, he will do that. But in entering a Christian indeed, nothing can take you from the love of Christ. You understand something now? You are not moved. You believe that, okay, if that's how God has spattered it, despite the prayers, this and that, there are people who marry in the Lord, who marry Holy Ghost, Jim Jim brother, and at the end of the day, the person divorced them. What else what do you want to say? He said, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, you are peaceful, long suffering, gentleness, you are gentle, goodness, you are, you see that goodness again? You are good, you are a person of faith. You don't lose faith. Hallelujah. That what God will do in my life, we will still do it. I'm not losing faith. God will remember Sarah. Who will remember Elizabeth? He's going to remember me. That's it. If it now happens that Jesus come or you die before that time, you are a winner all the same. The Bible says when we live, we are alive. We live for Christ. When we die, we die for Christ. It doesn't make any meaning hallelujah when we get to heaven they won't ask you how many children do you have do you have husband or do you have wife nobody's going to ask all those things even husband and wife when they get to heaven the bible said that they are like angels I will say this is my wife she ceases to be my wife when rapture happens every man shall appear you know before the judgment seats of Christ it's not a matter of or uh, it can't take two people one by one everybody will answer for himself I will line up maybe she will wonder to come be lined up and I will line behind alright every child will line behind our own is to preach to train our children in the way of the Lord and uh, they have the responsibility to be a Christian indeed not because you go to church not because your father is a pastor or your father is a bishop or reverend but because you have deliberately choose Christ who is the way who is the truth who is the life I don't want to preach long let's rise to pray are you a Christian indeed in whom there is no guy you must be a Christian indeed all these things must manifest in our lives we must shine the light for the world to see if you are here this morning you want to dedicate your life to Jesus can you bow down your heart, your, yourself your head and bow down your heart you want to say Lord Jesus I come this morning to say I am sorry where I have disappointed you I am sorry where I have failed you I am sorry I want I choose to be a Christian indeed not because I go to church I want to be a Christian indeed what I am doing I don't want to be a fake pastor a fake preacher, a fake person I want to be a Christian not because you are a pastor, no I am a Christian Brother Bass was a Christian before he became an apostle Paul was first a Christian before he could take up the ministry tell the Lord Jesus I am here this morning come into my life if you are there you want me to pray with you this morning can you please come to the front let me just pray for you I want to surrender to Jesus you want to say I want to quit fake life I don't want to be a fake I don't want to fake this faith I want to be a Christian indeed that Jesus could testify about my life. If you are there, raise up your hand. 
I'm going to pray with you. I want to be a Christian indeed. Raise up your hand. Or oh, you know that you are doing zigzag. But you want to maintain a straight walk with Christ. If you are there, raise up your hand. Close your eyes, everybody. If you have heard anything this morning, talk to the Lord. God, I want to be a Christian indeed. I want to walk in the path of wisdom. I want you to help me in this journey. I surrender my heart to you. You must take your faith serious. Let Jesus testify about you. Let fellow believers testify about your life. Let your neighbors testify about you. How good you are. The light you are shining in your environment your place of war let them see Christ in you don't take it don't take it for granted Christianity is not just a play play church going to church is not just let's go and get go to church you know some people come to church and they don't concentrate some people is the food they want to cook after church that is in their mind the market they want to go there are some people who come to church snapshot throughout the service facebook throughout the service their mind is not there they are not serious about the kingdom of the kingdom because they have turned church to an outing just like go to a party you go to something it's an outing on sunday let's go for an outing no it's a place to be trained to be discipled and that is what people like barnabas like paul pass through before they will be called a Christian indeed. In practice, in life, a Christian indeed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, bringing the whole con the congregation before you, and those who are watching us online. What you ask me to deliver is what I've delivered to your people. That this time around is not the time to fake. It's not the time to be unserious about the things of God heaven is looking at us the slight the such light of Jesus shone into the heart of Nathanael and this one is a Israel Israelite indeed and we saw a man called Barnabas that could be called a Christian indeed through his ministry through the, the disciple people he discipled in Antioch the Bible said the people in Antioch were calling them Christian. These are Christian indeed. Lord Jehovah God, you are saying that that is what we are supposed to be? And some of the characters that are expected of us, we have seen in your word. First, many Lord that have seen themselves this morning, if there is any wrong things, Lord, I ask for forgiveness. You will forgive in Jesus' name. Lord, show mercy. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse every life. However, from this moment, O oh God, we shall become light to our community. Light in our environment. Example to others. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask, O oh God, for grace to impart everyone. And the word we have heard today now will not leave us in a hurry in the name of Jesus the word is spirit I pray that the spirit of the word impart our spirits that we we'll go back and meditate and begin to do things right so that we might be made ready for, made ready for heaven in the name of Jesus for as many that are here this morning that are facing one challenge or the other I pray for them let that be a miracle let that be divine intervention those who are sick in the house receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Those of you that are battling with one challenge or the other, I speak peace into your life. I speak miracle in that direction. In the name of Jesus. Some of you that believe in God with all these economic challenges everywhere, the Bible says that in the time of famine, you are going to have in plenty. I prophesy plenty into your life. I prophesy prosperity into your life. I prophesy protection. No evil shall befall us. No no sickness will come near our dwelling. 
our life shall be preserved. Our life shall continue to give praise unto God as long as we live. Thank you, Lord, for answers to prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you.